In an election over the weekend, Brazil's Jair Bolsonaro, going for his second term, lost what? to a 20-year ex-con in jail for corruption. He ain't lying. Only in South America. I'm Jazz Berganzo, and this... You gotta be fucking kidding. ...is what's next. Good. Tuesday, everyone. Jazz Ragonzo here, another episode of What's Next, your daily dose. Hope you guys are doing well today. Well, this was a video that I meant to get done yesterday, but um, due to time constraints, uh, unfortunately, was not able to, but I'm going to knock it out for you. There was an election over the weekend in Brazil where you had Hadi, um, Hadi Bolsonaro, who was the current president, now former president. He lost in the closest election in decades, 50 to 49, to an ex-con who served 20 years for political corruption. Let that sink in for a little bit. And of course, those in the White House are mighty, mighty proud. You know, because it turns out Bolsonaro had uh, ties. He was a friend of the former president, Donald Trump. J. Trump. But um, let's take a look, shall we? This comes out of Breitbart. Corrupt socialist Lula beats Bolsonaro in Brazil's closest presidential election in decades. The top electoral authority in Brazil announced on Sunday evening that 77-year-old hardline socialist Luis Inácio Lula da Silva was, was once convicted and sentenced for over two decades in prison for alleged political corruption, had won this year's presidential election against incumbent conservative Jair Bolsonaro. In his first words as president-elect for a third term, he's been down this road before, Lula vowed to reconstruct the very soul of the nation away from small government, pro-freedom ideals of Bolsonaro administration. Yes, sounds a little socialistic. A little more than a percentage point separated Lula, who served as president previously from 03 to 011, and Bolsonaro as 10 p.m., representing about 2 million votes in a nation of 214 million people. The national newspaper of record, O Globo, described the results as the closest election since 1989 when Lula narrowly lost to Fernando Colón de Molón, who was impeached and ousted from office over corruption allegations in 1992. Color later supported the impeachment ouster of Lula's protege, Dilma Rousseff, in 16, also prompted by corruption allegations. You see where I'm going here. It's, it, 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 it's a trend. Kicking off a series of events that ultimately led to Bolsonaro's 2018 victory. With 99% of the votes counted, Lula received 50.9 to Bolsonaro's 49.1. Let that sink in. Now, in this country, that would constitute as an automatic recount. But in South America, eh, not so much. The top election authority in Superior Election uh, Electoral Tribunal counted 20.58%, 32.2 million votes, were absentees, meaning the voter did not make it to the polls. Absentees are different from blank votes, voters who present a ballot with nothing on it, and null votes. Ballots that cannot be counted for a variety of reasons for either candidate. Lula's high turnout in the Northeast, the country's poorest region, and its traditional stronghold made it possible to defeat Bolsonaro despite conservative triumphing in the nation's largest metropolises, Sao Paulo and Rio de Janeiro. Bolsonaro enjoyed his high support in Venezuela border region of Rom uh, Romania, Romama, I'm, I'm probably butchering the word, now heavily populated with socialist refugees and the inland state of Rondonia. Bolsonaro has yet to comment publicly. Rumors in major Brazilian newspapers claim that he is rejecting requests to speak, uh, to be visited, or to be spoke with. Brazilian news network Hovenpan reported that sources within Brazilian presidential palace did not have an expectation that Bolsonaro would speak on Sunday. Lula notably, uh, Lula notably did not mention receiving any concession call from Bolsonaro in his victory speech. Would you? Seriously. Would you call for a concession when you are one point 
between the two candidates in winning and losing. Again, in this country constitutes as a recount. Because you can see the photos of those voting. Lula delivered an address in which he accused his opponent of trying to bury him alive, but emphasized unity moving forward. Unity moving forward. Gee, sounds awfully familiar. Today we are telling the world that Brazil is back. Lula told a crowd of supporters on Sunday night, socialism, that Brazil is too great to be regulated to the sad role of the global pariah, socialism, and it's necessary to reconstruct the very soul of the country to recover generosity, solidarity, sol excuse me, solidarity, excuse me, respect for differences, and love for one another. Again, that sounds awfully familiar. Lula's victory in particular in Momento is given that during the 18 elections, which Bolsonaro won, he was in prison for being found guilty on bearing a luxury beachfront property with bribe money. Again, corruption. The case was part of a much larger corruption investigation that came to be known as Operation Car Wash, which unveiled a nationwide corruption scheme involving dozens of high-ranked politicians that operated during Lula's presidential tenure. Hmm, coincidence. Also taking the victory lap on Sunday was the head of the TSC electoral body, Alejandra Moraz, who served as justice on the top court. Nimrod said the TSE is heavy, uh, heavily censored opinions throughout the second round of campaigning, most prominently banning Bolsonaro campaign from calling Lula corrupt or a thief, even though those are facts, on the grounds that STF had to overturn his conviction on multiple appeals. Hoven Pan uh, complained last week that Demaras had essentially banned the network from mentioning Lula's corruption conviction in any capacity at all. In contrast, while TSC moved to censor left-wing attempts to smear Bolsonaro as a cannibal, Lula openly accused Bolsonaro of pedophilia. Nice. On Flow, one of Brazil's most popular podcasts during the second round of campaigning. Quote, this chapter will end the victory of democracy, society, of all voters, Demaras said in remarks of the election. Uh, there is, uh, there does not exist in any country of the world, not even a smaller democracies, that publish results in less than four hours within security, I'm sorry, with security, efficiency, and competence. Prior to Lula's victory, leftists began complaining uh, of alleged attempts by conservatives and police officers to block buses full of Lula supporters from reaching their voting stations. Leftist American President Joe Dementia was among the first to congratulate Lula because, of course, he did report a victory on Sunday. Biden, as a candidate in 20, had vowed to destroy Brazilian economy as a presidential candidate if Bolsonaro did not accept an unspecified $20 billion environmental investment, i.e., Green Deal garbage, prompting Bolsonaro to later threaten to go to war with the U.S. Their relationship never recovered. Gee, I wonder why. Quote, I sent my congratulations to Lula on his election to be the next president of Brazil following the free, fair, and credible elections, Dementia said in a statement. I look forward to working together in continued cooperation of socialism between our two countries that are socialist in the months and years ahead. Well, the years ahead, yeah, bud, those days are numbered. Two problems with this. First, as a convicted felon, dude, you've been down this road before. So because, again, like I just read, because of one judge who didn't quite like him, like his, uh, like the style of his jib, the entire conviction, even though the evidence was correct, it wasn't like the, you know, the defense introduced new evidence. The evidence never changed, but yet, quote unquote, in this country, we call it a technicality. His conviction gets overturned and he's allowed to run again, which, of course, was stupid. Because in this country, you can't run for any political office once convicted of a felon. Or felony, excuse me, of a felony. But there you go. And once again, of course, the fraudulent means is in play. 50 to 49. Like I said, and I'll say this for a third time, in this country, it constitutes as a recount. In any state of this country, it will be constitute as a recount, including a presidential, especially a presidential election. But because this bon Bolsonaro, you know, was sort of in cahoots with Donald Trump, you know, he was a friend of Trump's. Bolsonaro, who was a conservative, who wanted small taxes, more families involved. He was 
uh, he was in favor of higher education for children, better education for children in Brazil. No, 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 we can't have that. We want socialism. And Lula is just that. So, of course, I was looking on my Twitter feed and, of course, the leftists were jumping up and down, waving pom-poms and doing handstands that Lula won. You know, oh, we got rid of fascism in Bolsonaro. Really? So a guy who's conservative, who wants all these things, is a fascist. Well, then again, the same people who have labeled DeSantis as a fascist, Carrie Lake as a fascist, Trump as a fascist, uh, the over 50% of the country as fascist. Well, there you go. To quote the great philosopher, Ron White, you can't fix stupid. I'm Jazz Bergonzo. This is What's Next. Want to see more just like this? Please leave a comment below. Like it, share it, subscribe to it. And we'll catch you guys next time. Peace.